Now let's take a look at sliding aggregations, which work very similarly to running aggregations. All we're doing with sliding aggregations is further constraining the scope of visibility by reducing or framing the size of the window. Here is a slightly different version of the very same query we just looked at with running aggregations. And I'm aliasing the columns here with this S prefix instead of an R to indicate sliding. And I've also added this rows clause. Rows between two preceding and current row. Which means we are restricting the window not to go back more than two rows from the current row. This has no effect for the first three rows in the partition. But starting with row number four, assuming there are four or more rows in the partition, this query will only show aggregations over a window that's three rows in size, that ends with the current row and starts two rows up. This added restriction imposed by the rows clause is also known as framing. So just try to envision this window frame, three rows in size, sliding down each partition. In this sample, I've used the most verbose form of the syntax for framing here with the average function. But the shorter version used by all of the other functions are exactly the same, and that's because the between keyword is optional, and and current row is the default, or at least that's the default for aggregate functions. So now let's see how these sliding aggregations look. Like I said, these first three rows all look the same as they did before. They all show the running aggregations for the earliest three transactions in account one. But for the fourth row, the window is framed like this, and so it no longer considers the first row, meaning that this sum of 450 is the sum of just these three amounts, 250 plus 75 plus 125, without including the 500. And the same here for the fifth row, where now the count gets stuck at three, because once you hit three rows, it only ever looks back by two. Because we're ordered chronologically by transaction date, these sliding aggregations effectively provide us with aggregations that never go back more than two historical periods, which can be much more useful than aggregating all the way back to the beginning of time. This is yet another example of how powerful these windowing capabilities can be. And of course, once we break on partition, it starts all over again just the same for partition two. Beginning with one row, then two, then three, and then three rows sliding down again to the end of the partition in chronological order.